revolution in German fighter design, for she is the first German radial engine fighter of this war. The Fokker Wolf 190 has set her some tricky problems in the past. Spitz and Thunderbolts have got her taped now, but the 190 is still a vital factor in Germany's defense of her European stronghold. Lancasters by night and fortresses by day often come up against her. She's versatile too, and with a speed of 390, mixes tip-and-run raiding with night and day fighting. From the air, land or sea, the Fokker Wolf 190 is a plane which calls for instant recognition. First impressions, a low-wing radial engine fighter. Simple lines, hasn't she? Notice that those wings have blunt tips and that the tail plane is narrow and rectangular. Now for a really good look. Slightly underneath, but all the features are still here. The radial engine makes the 190's nose completely round. And the size of that nose gives you some idea of the amount of power that's packed into it. Check up on the low wings with dihedral from the roots and the cockpit stepped well up to give the pilot a good view. That gives you quite a bit to go on. Something more. The 190 is sometimes seen out with a bomb. A 500-pounder slung here. Don't get it mixed up with her auxiliary petrol tanks, which she carries under the wings when she wants to increase her range from 500 miles to just over 1,000. Now look at her from a bit further underneath. Plenty more here. That radial nose is quite short. The wings have straight tapered edges and blunt tips. That's a pretty useful clue. The tailplane has straight edges and blunt tips as well. But it's narrow in cord and has scarcely any taper. An almost perfect rectangle, isn't it? Would you know the 190 from above? Well, let's get on top of the job. You'll have to look carefully for there's a good example of the use of camouflage here. But let's make it easy this time. That's better. See those simple lines again. The radial engine seems to have controlled the design of the whole of the fuselage. As she moves into side view, here's a better view of the fuselage. Yes, the shape of that BMW 801 engine dominates the lines of the fuselage from large spinner right back to fin and rudder, which has an outline that's easy to remember. The position and shape of the cockpit offer one more very good point to go for. That fairing underneath is to streamline the bomb rack, which is usually mounted here on the bomber version. On the fighter, this fairing doesn't appear at all. Now for the next angle. Hold it. You can't miss that short nose. And despite the radial engine, that fuselage has a lean look at this angle. Now we've got an ideal view of the wings and the tailplane. The wings, remember, have straight taper to both edges and blunt tips. The tailplane has blunt tips as well, but is narrow in cord with scarcely any taper. Rectangular is the word to remember. OK, let her go. You've got the detail now, so check it over for yourself and make sure you've got the general impression which really counts. Circular nose. 
low wings with dihedral from roots. Straight tapered wings with blunt tips. Narrow rectangular tailplane. She's the Fokker Wolf 190, but never let a 190 get away. She's been spotted. Hot on the trail goes the Thunderbolt. Now for it. And what about you? If you can't pick out the Fokker Wolf right through this action, your recognition's at fault, and you must see this film again. Down among the dead men goes the Fokker Wolf 190.